All right. Hey, good afternoon, Dan. Dan Gutierrez. Good afternoon, Marty Keller. My uh, comrade in arms, my comrade in accountability. Good to see you. And, and welcome to uh, those of you who uh, like to follow these podcasts, or maybe you're here for the first time. We're glad to have you. We, uh, we talk about uh, demystifying our behaviors, looking at our compulsions and uh, befriending them so that we can create the life that we really want. And uh, this podcast uh, is dedicated to the idea that Socrates shared oh, a couple of years ago or a couple of millennia ago that the secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. So the work that we do here is uh, finding out how we can build the life that we want, the new life, the new world, the future, instead of being controlled by our past. And we uh, we go over many ideas, and uh, I think Dan, you've got one that you'd like to uh, raise and uh, uh, begin the discussion yeah. with today. Well, um, I recently uh, it was pointed out to me that uh, um, I'm I was uh, I'm thinking that I could solve my issue uh, that I'm that that uh, that I could solve my issues. And one of the things that was pointed out was uh, uh, step one in the ACA program, I'm powerless over my family of origins, dysfunction, childhood trauma. And my childhood trauma was that uh, I, I was the only, only child uh, and uh, the solution, um, the uh, the encouragement I was given was that I had to go to my room and figure it out and don't come back until I do. And I hadn't realized that, that that's where I was stuck. And uh, so it's pointed out to me that uh, I, need, I needed to surrender to uh, my childhood trauma, uh, family of origin dysfunction. And it, you know, hold myself accountable. That that's what's that's what I'm in. When I'm when I'm trying to figure it out for myself, um, I don't allow other information in. I'm the I'm I'm my higher power. I'm the source of the the solution, rather than surrendering to it and seeking something greater than myself to support me in navigating this. So the surrender part is uh, very powerful. If I, if I want to change, uh, create a change in my life, um, I need to surrender to that fact that I'm powerless over my family of origin dysfunction. And uh, that's what I that's what I come to be aware of. And it's like I found myself very hesitant and resistant to doing that. And it's like, well, I'm not powerless. yeah <laughs> that's where that's that's where the denial the minimizing and i you know um I, i'm not willing to own that because that's my that's my only source of uh power uh, comfort is that i can figure it out which in turn keeps me stuck in the past i'm operating from uh, a, a childhood uh adaptation to uh, creating my world as a seven-year-old or, or or younger, and um, I'm doing this at age 65. Again, it's been pointed out that I, I need to surrender to that because I'm not going to. There is no trump card to it. I have to surrender to it to move through it and create the life that I want. Okay, so, so when let's I, be, when I, it, it, let's uh, I'd just like to probe into that a minute if it's okay. Uh, so. Uh, what, especially for somebody who might be coming to this conversation for the first time, what does it, what, what does it mean to surrender? What's the, what's the practical steps that you have that one has to take to actually effectuate that? Um, it, it's it's an it's an admission, it's a surrendering to, um, being accountable for, my truth. I am powerless over it, despite all the fact that I'm trying to resist it, change it, and uh, I'm going to conquer it. Uh, I'm going to make it go away. When I can admit that I am powerless over it, 
I'm no longer fighting it. So it's like you're saying, it's like you're saying, uh, it's an acceptance. It's a, it's an owner. It's an owning it's of an a owning. fact that, that before I was going, no, no, I have power here. What, what are you exactly. kidding me? Well, and then I mean, of course, and then of course, never having any actual solutions occur. No. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm stuck in my, I'm stuck. And uh, the, the idea that I can solve this problem, that there's a, there is a solution out there. If I keep trying hard enough, moves me, it takes me away from creating the life that I want. I'm spending all my energy on trying to solve a problem. Well, we're, well, we're, uh, uh, again, just for clarity for the, the person who might be hearing this for the first time, they're actually, uh, one of our principles is I'm always getting what I want. So when you say it's taking you away from the life that you want, don't you mean it's taking away from the life that your adult consciousness wants? Because what keeps returning me back to that is that there's a little seven, six, five-year-old that's getting what he wants which is this sense of control, the sense of grandiosity, this this uh, this uh, mistaken belief that somehow I can control and keep myself from being harmed by creating some kind of sense of, uh, I, could, I got this covered and I don't need anybody else. I'm, I'm, I'm okay all by myself and the heck with the rest of the world. Yeah, and, and what I've discovered is that I wind up recreating the family of origin uh, body chemistry while I stay in the fight. That fight is me as that little that little boy or that inner child uh, in survival mode. And yeah, so it's so what you're saying is it's like you're feeling like you're like you're like you felt when you were a little kid trying to survive whatever was going on in the actual circumstances of your life. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, I don't want to give that up because what happens if I quit fighting? What happens if I quit not being hypervigilant? Uh, what happens if I'm not adrenalized all the time? You know, my life is going to go into the toilet. You know, I, I still think dad's going to come home drunk and, and or uh, mom's going to come home and uh, who knows what she's going to do. Throw some shoes at me and, and uh, you know, don't talk to me for three or four days um <laughs> yeah, yeah it's hard for it's hard for us as adults to appreciate how that the the chemistry that comes from the stress the adrenaline the fear um impacts a little body i mean we're, we've been living in these adult bodies for 30 40 50 years um so we forget that the fragility even though this our, our little kids bodies are also uh resilient they're also fragile and I keep thinking of whenever I remind myself or have the feeling of what it was like to, to be scared, to to listen to mom and dad screaming and yelling and having that fear seize my body that I'm going to die, that 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 and, and somehow we had to create a defense against that because it was unbearable. And, right. and as as adults, we forget that. Well, that's the part where uh, being surrendering to it and naming it uh, is is the awareness that it's still present in my life, and I'm and I'm 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 not necessarily aware of it in the moment, but that's the first step in creating that change. If I don't, if if I if I, okay, for me, after it was pointed out to me, I, I just noticed how difficult it was for me to go, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, I'm powerless over it. And it's like, and I'm telling myself at the same time, it's like, you don't believe, you don't believe that for a minute. And I go, well, yeah, uh, you're right, I don't. I, and then let's take that to the accountability tree. I don't want to surrender. I don't want right. to give up, quote, unquote, control, uh, quote, unquote, control over my life. My life's not unmanageable. Oh, it's not. Look, look, look what you just look what you're going through right now. Oh, Jesus. You know, okay. All right. Oh, okay. I am powerless over this family of origin dysfunction. And its effects in my body. It's that adrenaline. And it, it's it's uh, it's powerful when I can do that. 
when I remind myself that I'm engaged in this battle for control, that little kid is trying to do his best to stay alive and his skill set does not work in the adult world. Right. Well said. Because, because as an adult, I have the power to say, no, don't treat me like that. And if I have to, I can ask for help to support me. None of those things were available to that little boy. And uh, it's it's running in the background to the point where uh, I can't see it. Someone, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm living the world from the inside out, so I can't see from the outside in. I can never see what's going on because I don't have that vision. That's why we go to meetings. That's why uh, we need an outside in perspective. And for me, it was okay, time to, time to surrender again. And uh, I intend to surrender on a, on a daily basis. I, yeah, I intend to wake up and surrender to my family of origins, dysfunction, childhood trauma. That changes, that changes the outlook slowly. I can be accountable for it. Slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. And then we see the other steps that follow in on, on uh, any in a 12 cell can restore me to sanity. Ooh, man, that's like, I just gave up control. Uh, uh, I, man, that's a tough one. Especially because that been running on 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 me safety. It's like I need, yeah, okay. I need to surrender to that because it affects my life. It affects my behavior when you know um, family of origin, and I can't not trigger myself. I can't get, I can't, and it's just, I'm powerless over the triggering, but I'm not helpless. I can be, I can surrender and then move forward, be accountable for my behavior, and then slowly change this, uh, change my life in, in, in a conscious way. But it's going to be with me rather than see it as something that I need to conquer and remove. I see it as a source of, uh, I see my family of origin dysfunction when I can see it as an inspiration to support me in creating the new life that I want. I remember so I was in a, Go ahead. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I, I remember I was in a meeting once and I don't remember the, the context, uh, we, but the conversation was about surrender and uh, people were um, asking about, you know, how, how do I do that? And um, as I listen to what you're saying, uh, I remember someone saying, okay, surrender means stop fighting. Stop fighting. Because what I'm hearing you say, and it's my own experience as well, there's this there's this inner urge to struggle. There's this inner urge to resist. There's this inner urge to fight. And uh, again, that's traced right back to uh, our childhood when we had to defend ourselves. And defense is a, a fight against what's coming at us. It's a it's a it's a determination to push back, or it's a determination to to uh, to carve ourselves off from what's going on to create a way to to stay safe. And then here we are, years later, and and you know, as you're saying, um, we we receive the information from our friends and and lovers and allies who say, you know. Would you be willing to consider you don't need to fight what you're what's going on? Would you be willing to oh, consider yeah. you can just let go? And uh, then that's where the that's where the work begins, because like you said, uh, I really like what you said that uh, you know there's a part of us that doesn't believe that or doesn't want to let go. And, no, it can't. And, and that's and it can't. And that's that little kid. 
that's that little kid who who I, I agree with you. He 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 or she cannot let go. And so we have to find another way to assist with that that uh, that little kid to help that little kid who doesn't even at least, I don't know about you, but my little kid doesn't even trust the adult in me or he didn't when I first started this process to actually uh, help me. And because I I heard that from adults before. I literally had parents say, uh, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. And I was like, no, no, it won't. Right. And my, and my medicine won't taste bad. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, we, our, our little kids are wise to the bullshit of the adult world, um, but they're not wise to the solutions. Right. And so here we are now. Uh, and you know, you and I are saying to to each other and to those listening that uh, the beginning of of creating this future that we talked about in the Socrates quote, it's looking to the future that we want, means letting go of the past, literally stopping, stop the fight against the past, stop the fight against the the belief systems, and and you know, it's it's so counterintuitive, Dan. Most people. I know when I first heard this, it just it didn't make sense to me. Right. I mean, there's 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 uh, there's quotes all over the place. You know, uh, what I fight, I strengthen. What I resist, persists. And it's like, yeah, you know, I I believe that. And uh, yeah, okay, I get that. And then it's like, well, I don't realize what I'm fighting. And it's, <laughs> it's like, well, what what do you? What's going on with you? What keeps showing up? Well, I keep getting triggered. Well, why do you keep getting triggered? Uh, well, where's that coming from? And then, then the light bulb uh, reignites, goes back off, lights back up. It's coming from childhood, and I'm powerless over the effects of growing up in a dysfunctional alcoholic home. And, uh, okay, um, surrender. I, I hated that word. I mean, I, I come from, you know, uh, a military background and, you know, surrendering. No, no, no. no. Oh, no, no, no. That, that means that's, and then not only that, I come from a uh, highly uh, male-dominated culture where the word surrender is uh, the worst thing you can do. And uh, it's like, that means you gave up. What kind of man gives up? You know, nobody likes a quitter. <laughs> It's just <sighs> well, it's remember Churchill's famous line, never, never, never surrender. And it's just like that's the that's the part where uh our culture is always or you know still just fight, 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 don't ever give in. Well, um surrender is not giving in. If somebody told me once a uh, surrender is just switching to switching to the winning team. The other team has the solution, and that's not to fight it. It's not to resist it. It's to admit that I'm powerless over it. That's why I, I like to use the term let go uh, in the same way as that we're using the word surrender. So to sort of let go. And, um, and, and, and you know, the, the thing that we don't, most of us don't also realize is that everything we do is a faith walk. Everything we do, we're, we're, there's a belief behind everything that we do. There's a belief behind the little kids' need to control. There's a the belief is that if I keep everything under control, I'll be okay. So there's right. also there's also a belief behind letting go, and that belief is that there is something greater in my life. There is a power greater than myself. I don't may not know what it is. It may be my inner wisdom. It may be some spiritual truth. Uh, maybe some divinity um, in the 12 steps. We don't need to know what that is. We just need to know that there's something greater than ourselves that we can have faith in, uh, in the same way that our little kid only has faith in, faith in himself or herself. And so, yeah. it's, so once I realize, well, you know what? I, I, I kind of I do everything under, in faith. I just don't see it that way. But once I saw it that way, then I realized I can choose what I want to put my faith in. And 
that this act of surrender, right. this act of letting go is in fact a choice to put our trust in something greater than ourselves. And I know that you and I can both attest that yeah. as we've done this work and we've we've let go, how many, like you said, I intend to let go every day, that for every time that we've let go, there's been a reward. There's been a there's been a benevolence right. that's occurred. There's never been, I've never gone backwards. I've never fallen back when I've consciously chosen to let go or surrender. Um, and the, the, uh, uh, and it's a faith walk and I'm, I'm willing to, I'm willing to trust or believe in something different and see what happens. Well, what just came to me is like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm willing to let go. Um, Back in the 80s and stuff, when bungee jumping first came out, I remember when I, I climbed over the bridge railing and I was there and they had me all bungeed up and, uh, you know, it came it came to my turn to jump or, just, you know, let go of the railing and fall. Right. And I think back and I go, you know, I let go. I let go of that railing. And as soon as I let go of the railing and, and I, I realized I couldn't go back, there was no way for me to go back to the top of the bridge and I was falling, I made the decision that I'm, I'm going to enjoy this. And uh, so I had faith that the bungees were going to hold. Well, uh, I've skydived. Skydived? Is that a word? I've gone skydiving. Right. And uh, I've jumped out of perfectly good airplanes with a parachute on my, on my back that I didn't pack, that I didn't see and all that. And it's like, well, what? What the hell is up with that? I trust that it's gonna. I, I trust the parachute's gonna open. Otherwise, I wouldn't jump out. And let me surrender control over this portion of my life is different. It appears to be different, but it's the same trust that it's going. To, I'm, I'm going to be safe. Um, has allowed me to make that 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 leap of surrender. It's like just. You know, it's just like jumping off that bridge. Just let go and trust that, that this is the right way to go. And have the experience. And based on that experience, know that I didn't die from this experience. Pay attention. And it's like, okay, I didn't die. I did, whatever I thought was going to happen didn't happen. And look what the benefits are. Okay, so I intend to surrender on a daily basis to family of origin uh, because I see the benefit in it now. And, well, and it, it's, I'm not, I don't know if I don't need to fight it because there, there, there's nothing, there's nothing to fight. It's, it's a, it's my perception that I have to do this by myself. And, and that is, that's the default setting that I developed in childhood. Now I get to trust that you can help me there. Uh, the possibility exists that, the outside outside help can come in now because I've surrendered to the fact that I can't do this by myself. Whereas before, I can only do it by myself. <laughs> yeah, and isn't what you're saying, uh, isn't that really take us to the heart of the accountability tree? I mean, isn't it? Yep. Isn't it when I when I uh, uh, I own that I don't I'm powerless over the effects of the experience I had growing up as a kid, I'm, I'm starting to state my truth. So for those of you who, uh, who may not know, then the accountability tree, as we call it, which is just a couple of steps that we take to penetrate our defenses and create this new experience that we want, uh, we start with telling the truth. And what's the truth? In this case, as I think, Dan, as you're talking, uh, we're talking, the truth is I'm powerless. And once I, once I can own that I'm powerless, and particularly when I don't want to, Particularly, I don't know about you, but I can actually feel resistance in my body. I can feel in my torso that sense of, uh, you know, don't say that. Maybe even my teeth clench like I just did. Um, I can, if I if I'm willing to say, I, I okay, I'm I'm powerless. I, I'm I'm willing to let go and take that breath. I'll have a feeling. I'll have a feeling in my body that uh, can be the basis. For the acknowledgement of this truth, and maybe that'll right. be, maybe maybe that'll be a sense of relief. I don't know, um, but whatever it is, I, I can now do, 
go on to the second step of the accountability tree and then ask, what do I want in light of this experience? And I may say, I want confidence. I want serenity. And I can, I can then create those as intentions. So I, I really get that. Uh, I really think that this, uh, this whole topic that you're raising really is about the heart of the accountability practice, even though we didn't Absolutely. say that at the top. Yeah. Because that, you know, I, I surrender to, to, uh, you know, I'm powerless over, uh, g gives me, gives me, uh, an acknowledgement of the truth. Despite the fact that I've been trying to fight it, outsmart it, outthink it, uh, outmaneuver it, um, I can't. And uh, now the truth is that the reality, the the actual, uh, there is a core truth that I do know. As an adult, I can't out, I can't, I can't, I can't outsmart it. It's cunning, powerful, and baffling. Uh, and it's like okay. Now what what am I open now that I agree to that that I can't I can't uh, I can't I can't fight it I don't want to fight it anymore it's 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 a fight that I can't win okay and uh, that's surrender take a deep breath what do I want I just I intend to surrender on a daily basis and for me that gives me uh, a myriad of opportunities what do I want I want to accept. Uh, I want to seek different avenues. I want to. I want to trust my higher power. Uh, I want to have develop a greater connection with my higher power. Uh, I want peace, joy, and connection with people around me. For me. Despite despite the fact that I want to connect with them, and I don't care how many times I've I've said I won't do this or I'm sorry, I'm still fighting it, and it, and it doesn't give me any relief or doesn't change things. But when I can surrender or be accountable for, I'm powerless over this. You know, I always want to say, thank God somebody's been listening. You know, somebody finally, you, you finally admit it, you know, or, or um, that's alignment with my trauma that I can. I'm alone in this fight. I'm the only one who can protect me. I can't trust anybody. And that gives me a, a, a sense of relief when I say those things. It's like, okay, I can ask for help. So it's almost like when, uh, if I'm listening to you accurately, it's almost like when we surrender, there's a clearing away. There's a clearing away of, of the past, uh, the stuff that's been an obstacle to us in the past. And whenever we do that, we open up you know, infinite possibilities and we get to make right. new choices. Again, that brings us around to the Socrates quote about uh, facing the facing the, the, the new rather than concentrating on the old. Right. But we have to we have to find a way to deal with that old stuff, because, as we said at the beginning of the podcast, we have frightened and addicted little children who are not going to surrender control. They're not going to do that. That's an adult choice. That's what we get to yep. do as, as adults. Right. So and, and, yeah, I want to validate that that, that little the little boy or, or my inner child for his yep. valiant, uh valiant uh persistence and never cease never ending ceasing uh desire to uh keep himself safe. I want to validate him and uh now. My intention is to uh, incorporate that uh, the wounded child into my, in, you know, be accountable and, and incorporate it, surrender to it. That for for some reason I I I, I'm, I can't describe what that really 
just I'm feeling right now is just uh, I'm kind of at a loss for words, but it's it's like uh, I'm no longer Sisyphus. <laughs> I'm I'm no longer going to be pushing that rock up the hill. I'm going to see what happens if I get out of the way and let it go down. Am I going to die from this experience? And I don't have to push it back up. How about I just go do something else? I don't want yeah, what do I want? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do I want to keep pushing this rock all my life? No. No. <laughs> well, with uh, with that, we've come to the end of our time together. So uh, I want to. I want to thank you for sharing that. And uh, those of you who are watching, particularly if uh, you're watching for the first time, we invite you to come to an accountability practice meeting and, and see the, see how we work this stuff in a practical way. And uh, perhaps maybe even there's something that you'd like to work on, some trigger that happens to you and you, you're you tired of it, but you, you can't change it because you don't know how to, you haven't been taught how to surrender to uh, what's going on inside you. So, uh, if you'd like to attend any of our meetings, there's uh, uh, meetings Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday, different times of the day. Um, it, they're all on Zoom, so uh, just check out at the end of the podcast. There'll be the the specific times and the addresses to the Zoom rooms. We'd invite you to come and check it out for yourself. And if there's any topic you'd like to hear us discuss, uh, just leave us a comment here on the YouTube channel, and we'd be happy to uh, to explore what it is you'd like to know more about. So with that, Dan, I appreciate your time and uh, look forward Thank to you. the next one. Take care. Sounds good. All right. Bye. Yay.